Old Girl Media visited Fort Worth, Texas to sit down with legendary basketball coach Robert Hughes Sr. These few stats on the screen are only a glimpse into his greatness. Now 89 years old, Coach Hughes reflects on his storied career. We just refuse to let anybody outwork us. I mean, that's just what we were doing and that. The UIL and all those folk would just find a, 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 a new route to put on us so we couldn't, we were thinking of the Christmas holidays. Christmas holidays, we were in the gym every day. Most of the other teams weren't there, and then the white teams was out in the West skiing. Mm -hmm. Well, the minus of that for them, and the plus of that for us is, we had been in the gym every day during the Christmas break. Mm -hmm. Then when you come down here and play us in the tournament, it's amazing to see how many rules they changed. Not because they wanted to change in the state, but they wanted to change so that we couldn't work like we do. His house is full of fun memorabilia, providing a wonderful trip down memory lane. Normally they'll have something on that. Oh, wait. They put it so light. This there are some things you look for and there are some things you don't look for and there are some things that you just automatically, and this is what I'm, I'm talking about basketball players now, Mm -hmm. There's just certain things you're going to do. We're going to do that every day. We're going to do that every day in the year that we can get in a gym without being thrown out. I should have said like I coach, like my coach at Texas Southern, mm -hmm. Coach Adams. Yeah, I was, you'd have to see him. Yeah, I was about 6'5 six, or 6'6. Six, six. Mm -hmm probably weighed about 250. Had the biggest hands you'd ever see, but no body fat, but huge. And, and I never heard him use a curse word. Never. Him on the head football coach there. But uh, you knew if uh, he told you to do something, you either need to do it or hurt yourself trying to do it. Give you his right arm. I mean, he was, he was a special guy. Most of the habits I had as a, as a uh, coach was habits that I developed from the time I left Japan right after World War II through the college, through Coach Adams. All of these things was things that I worked on, watched him looked at players the whole bit. And uh, there are just certain things you just don't do. There are certain things that you must do. And the biggest one was keep your lips sealed. And the other one was if you're playing at either Terrell or Dunbar, and you don't want to work hard, you need to get my main player, main singer, get the road jack, don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> you think of all the lousy, worse than lousy officials, even the newspaper mentioned it now every once in a while, but they try to cover it up. But it's true. Those guys are sorry. And the thing about it is you can't do anything about it. And the big thing with the players is do not get a technical foul. You don't do technicals. Of course, you're giving the guy the ball and an opportunity to score. Mm -hmm. We're not giving you anything. We're a good old fashioned whipping. Now, <laughs> <laughs> mm. huh? that says James Cash. James Cash. Yeah. Right. He's the guy that opened up uh, TCU for black athletes. And so James Cash was one of your students? Yeah, he was a terror. He was a terror, okay.
James Cash now is a multimillionaire. And evidently, we had a good team that season before. I guess we must have beat both of those teams because they came in talking and lipping and everything else mm -hmm. about all the stuff that they were going to do. And they left going back to Dallas Ofer. We beat both of them. Mm -hmm. Well, after we won those two games in Dallas, and I mean, we just... Evidently, we just mopped the floor with it. And the, the uh, news media was asking questions about them and about us and all the other stuff that goes on. So this is when I told them, well, as long as we can keep the mamas working and they can call me at night, find out what baby is doing or didn't do, but first place he shouldn't be out at night. We'll be okay now. If that's not okay, I'll have to give them the golden Twinkie. Well, I can't tell you about the golden Twinkie because I might get arrested. <laughs> I'm sure the statute of limitations has expired. Huh? I'm sure the statute of limitations has expired. Oh, well, now, nobody will even think about it. Now. The mamas are great grandmothers but now. True, true. But it was a case of I wanted to give them something to hold on to, which they already had because they knew I wasn't going to throw the guy under the bus. And I was going to push him, but I wasn't going to throw him anywhere. So that's where all that came back. And then the news media got on to it. <laughs> and then the uh, Athletic people, I don't mean our athletic, I mean the guys that selling because they gave me about seven or eight of those shirts. Golden Twinkie. <laughs> but I never explained it to them what the Golden Twinkie was. I just left it there hanging where you would guess. Well, my mother was about six feet. She's easy six feet, but she was tall and skinny. And she had blue eyes too, but not as blue as the young, the baby boy. Baby boy was blue. And you, you could see him coming down in high school all those years. Never was in a fight unless somebody joined the younger brother in a fight, which was going to be two against one. He probably could beat both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I just decided where we were joined. But other than that, no fights. But he, well, first place, I, I came in off of a farm up until World War II started. And I, my brothers, because I have six brothers, they went into the service. Mm -hmm. So we shut that down. Nobody was there but me and my younger brother. So we just had to shut it down. We never went back to the farm. After the war was over, the brothers went somewhere else. They would just tell us what we needed to do. But it, it, you just you have to have, and I, I credit my brothers with a lot of that too, because they were all workers. There was no one that sat around the house and did nothing. And when I think back, I think of the older brothers and the baby boy that was under me. No one in that family were drinkers. But then again, if you're on the farm, what are you going to drink besides cow milk? <laughs> you, you don't have whiskey out there. Whiskey and all that stuff is anywhere from six miles to nine miles. Mm. So you just don't have a lot of those habits. And of course, needless to say, the baby boy was, was always listed as the worst baby in the world. Everybody failed. <laughs> <laughs> just jumped, I even did that, and he was just right under me. But he was, he was the baby boy, that's what he did. And in fact, he was the only one that ever drank. 
Mr. D. Okay. My sister, seven brothers. Mm. Wow. Every, I re, and I might slide that in at that meeting. She got up and told us, well, I don't have all the problems the rest of you all have. Because I have seven brothers, and three of them are not wound too tight. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's pretty good. So well, she was right. If you, yeah. if you touched across my sister, you need not to leave town. You needed to leave the state of Oklahoma. Mm. That's just how it was. Oh, so those Hughes brothers were tough, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, really, and I, I, I've often thought about that when I was growing up. We were not a bunch of guys that walked around looking for fights. Uh, first place we were not guys, and I, I don't know why I'm saying we, because I was a munchkin then, because those older brothers had a gap in there. Mm -hmm. we, now, if one thing's going to happen, Gonna get you in big trouble if you jump on one of them and somebody else comes to help the guy that's getting beat up by us. We're not gonna take it that. Yeah, mm -hmm. boy, you just gave yourself a good, massive butt whipping. Coach Hughes' legacy lives on through his son, Bob Hughes Jr. He now coaches the Dunbar Flying Wildcats. His son was by his side as he was honored as part of the class of 2017 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. It's a late honor for a man that has lived a legendary life. It's a thing that you have, it's something that I talk up all the time and the thing is working. How hard do you work? What are you going to do today to make you better than you were yesterday? That means you got to work. You got to push yourself. And there are a lot of people that just don't, they can't stand the pushing. Proclamation, Tarrant County, Texas. Coach Robert Bob Hughes, Dunbar Flying Wildcat. This is nice. So, Tuesday, March 23rd, 1993, is Robert Hughes Day throughout Tarrant County. And this is the proclamation for that wonderful day. Much of his success can be credited to the hardworking young men he coached through the years. Coach Hughes was known to be a stern leader from the bench. I'm the quietest guy there. I've always been the quietest guy. But by the same token, if they want somebody to speak, who do they find? Me. And I am not a professional talker. I'm a professional reader. Now I read every, all these things you see, I've read those. Mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna read them again and gonna order some more. That is just part of my makeup. And talking or speaking is really a piece of cake. But one of them is I don't try to get up there and talk for one hour and a half. It's going to be sweet and quick. And I'll know what I'm talking about because as the guy told us when I was a freshman in college, read, read, read. Everything you read is just going to go somewhere in your head and it's going to stop there. And that's information, no, he said it. That's what we call the usefulness of over-reading is there. If you need it, you can use it. So I've, I've been reading for, God, I was reading 
before I went into first grade. Of course, I, my, my mother was a teacher too. Hmm. And she used to give me a fit because I wanted her to read to me at night and I was so glad when I learned how to read, I didn't know what to do with them. My teachers, <laughs> oh man. First day of class, go to class, I'm already reading, and then we did something about birth dates and what happened, and names, really. When it got to me, I just wrote mine down, R.L. Hughes. And they, you would have thought that I had robbed them of their money. Hmm. You can't have a uh, name that's an initial. And then they went around and told all their other buddies. Gave me a name, mm -hmm. Robert Lee Hughes. My mother being a teacher, just, she just let it start down. Everybody in support of Oklahoma in that area, I am R.L. If you said Robert, they'd look at you like you had lost you mind. In retirement, Coach Hughes can be found scouting games for his son, still preparing the Flying Wildcats after all these years. Reporting for O-Girl Media, I'm Olivia Sanders.